Welcome back. One of the key elements to building a successful corporate alliance is having a system in place to monitor its progress. Lorraine Siegel is a partner at the relationship management consultant group Vantage Partners. She's also author of the new book called Measuring the Value of Partnering. She joins me now to explain. Welcome. Thank you. Measuring the value of partner partnering. Measuring it can be difficult when you're in a partnership. Explain. Well, it's not too difficult to create a partnership for most companies. They think of an idea, they go out, they find a partner, and they start deal making. Unfortunately, when you have done that, you then have to implement and develop results. And so we have found that using an approach that involves metrics, in other words, measuring stuff in the beginning stages of thinking about the right partner, looking at the strategy, how it aligns with your corporate strategy, thinking about who all the different options might be for partnering, and then structuring, negotiating, and creating the partnership in such a way that it really has the best opportunity for success, and then measuring all the way through the relationship. Those and starting with the metrics ahead of the actual agreement. Exactly, exactly. And so we divide metrics into alliance development metrics and alliance implementation metrics. And an example of an alliance development metric might be a time to decision making. So for a small company that's partnering with a very large company, that's a critical element for them. Mm -hmm. They may have two people at the top of the company who make a decision. They can do it in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. The large company has 17 committees and takes three and a half months. So those are very critical things to measure at the beginning stages, and that's why we divide up those metrics into two big groups. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, this, in your experience, does this uh, help um, grease the wheels to getting a partnership together, or does it often uh, find a, come to a situation where the decision is made very early on, looking at the metrics, that a partnership won't work? And exactly right. So yeah. if you're going to actually think about doing a partnership, think about all the resources it's going to take. For a small company, that may actually distract them from running the business because the CEO or the president has to be involved almost on a daily basis mm -hmm. if it's with a large company and it's strategically important. So Give me an example of a small company that you've worked with and, and used these metrics. Well, in my book, I speak about a couple of women-owned companies which were smaller companies and had developed partnerships, one in particular, with state and federal government. Mm -hmm. And in that area, they had to understand very clearly what the decision timelines were and also the quality issues because there are many requirements from a, a federal or a state partner partner that are very, very specific. And these two companies, both Stronghold Engineering and another one called New Technology Management, have done a phenomenal job and actually have grown incredibly because they understood the needs of the partner and they got all that information up front mm -hmm. before they actually did the deal, so I, to speak. Is it easy to get that information from a government partner or, or is, it, is it easier to deal with it uh, on a business-to-business -business relationship? Well, interestingly enough, it's easier to get it from the government because they generally have so many rules and protocols mm -hmm. and quality and requirements and qualifications that you really can get all that paperwork up front. The problem is putting together a system that's very effective um, and doesn't burden your activities mm -hmm. to actually account for all that and still do the business well. And so where do you begin then? Well, you have to begin with relationship development, and that's really understanding who the stakeholder is, who the customer is. It may be the federal government, but there are people there who you have to deal with. They have expectations. They have comparisons of your company and their activities to other companies. Understanding all of those issues is part of the metrics of the development stage. Now, you, and, and smaller businesses can, can learn from the experiences that larger businesses have, uh, have run with this type of thing. Tell me about IBM's relationship uh, uh, to this uh, particular theory and, the, and this method. Well, IBM has done a very interesting uh, approach in the area of their software partners. They have taken their independent software vendors and said to them, we're not going to compete with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they have developed relationships with companies with whom they had competed pre-1999. Siebel is an example. Mm -hmm. Very, very effective software development relationship with Siebel. They've said to them, your market space is one we want to be in. We'd like to partner with you to get into it instead of competing with you. And therefore, they've put a very detailed 147-step process together, which works for IBM. It may not work for other companies, but IBM is known to be very process-oriented. And in the software group, it's been quite effective. Mm -hmm. And that, that's very interesting because uh, you know, Lou Gerstner, in, in turning around IBM, uh, making that decision to go uh, uh, for services and really to hook up with 
uh, enemies of your enemy, and the enemy being Microsoft in many cases, uh, and, and finding those smaller operators that they could work with, and that's been very successful for them. Right. Well, smaller and larger operators. And, you know, for a small company, partnering with IBM is a real challenge because when you have a process-focused company as IBM is mm -hmm. and you are a smaller company, it can take up a lot of your resources to fulfill their requirements. So mm -hmm. that has been a learning experience for some small companies, and I've met a couple of them that have partnered with IBM and are doing quite a good job at it. But it is a learning experience and it takes time to really understand the culture uh, of both companies. And there needs to be patience on both sides as Absolutely. that works. Absolutely. What about Starbucks? How, how have they used it? Starbucks are really the premier firm when it comes to partnering. They've done a spectacular job. But for them what's really important is the cultural aspect mm -hmm. because the culture of Starbucks is a very important part of their value proposition. Mm -hmm. What they sell you is not just coffee, mm -hmm. it's experience. Mm -hmm. And therefore they want to be sure that their partners have an understanding of that. One of the stories I talk about in my book is that a two-year discussion negotiation that went on between the senior management members of Starbucks and a partner. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the ways that they like to get to know people is to get to know their families, to go to their homes, mm -hmm. to really understand what the partner's all about, not just their business. Mm -hmm. In a final uh, dinner, which was a celebratory dinner, the partner made a remark that was somewhat racist mm -hmm. and even though everything had taken two years to come to that, pl that place and everybody was happy, they terminated the relationship mm -hmm. because that is just unacceptable behavior mm -hmm. and culturally Starbucks is absolutely determined to maintain its culture in its partnering activities and mm -hmm. that's why you see consistency worldwide wherever you go and so drink So then you have product. to understand your partner's point of view very much so. You Lorraine do. Siegel, thank you very much. You're welcome. Once again, uh, the book is called Measuring the Value of Partnering, uh, How to Use Measuring to plan, develop, and implement successful alliances. Plenty still ahead. Stay with us back after this.